Hello, I'm Sam with jbugs.com. We just finished up installing all the front steering, suspension, and brakes on our Eurolux Super Beetle. And to finish up the steering, we're going to get the steering column rebuilt and reinstalled. I disassembled, cleaned, and painted the column at home. And now at our bench, we start the reassembly by installing the greased lower steering shaft needle bearing into the column tube. Then we slide the steering shaft in to make sure the bearing is seated and the lower tube seal is pushed onto the end of the tube to keep the bearing in place. The shaft is removed, and then the column tube is pushed into the upper steering column housing. The tube needs to be pressed in until the notches for the steering column lock in the tube and the housing line up. The spring-loaded lock sticks through the housing and inserts into the locked grooves on the shaft when the ignition key is removed. Next, we'll install the original steering column bushing and the upper steering column bearing onto the shaft. And tap the bearing into place onto the bushing. The shaft is slid back into the housing. We pull off the lower boot for a moment, slide on the upper steering column boot, and then reinstall the lower boot. The snap ring for the upper bearing is installed and seated with the mallet and small screwdriver. The steering shaft spacer is slid over the shaft and held in place with a circlip. Then for safekeeping, we temporarily install the steering wheel nut and washer. The clamp bolt for the upper column housing is threaded into place. Then we get to work on assembling the ignition switch assembly. First, we install the lock cylinder end of the housing, lining up the index groove, and then sliding the cylinder down into place. Turning the key back and forth while pushing the cylinder down aligns the ignition lock with the steering lock. We test the operation of the key and the cylinder to make sure everything is seated, and then we can install the ignition switch. After unthreading the very small set screw from the housing, the new switch can be installed. We make sure that the lock assembly is indexed to line up with the switch by turning the key as needed. Then we push the switch into the assembly making sure that the hole on the switch lines up with the hole in the housing. The set screw is threaded in, and then we test the operation of the switch, and then slide the assembly down into the column housing, wires first. Once the lock assembly is in place, we remove the key and turn the steering shaft to lock the assembly. The lock assembly trim plate is set into the housing and the new Allen screws are threaded in to hold it and the lock assembly in place. At the car, the steering column is slid in place under the dash. Then in the trunk, we slide the original backing plate from the steering column boot in place. As we mentioned in our last video, the boot is not really needed, but we do like to keep the plate in place here as a dust shield. The steering column is lined up with the steering shaft, making sure that the alignment grooves for the set bolt line up, and the shaft is tapped in place. We turn the shaft so we can install the bolt, and then turn it again so we can install and tighten the nut. Inside the car, under the dash, the column housing bolts are threaded in to hold the housing in place. We don't tighten them down all the way as we're going to have to drop the column later when we install the dash. We remove the steering wheel nut and washer and slide on a temporary steering wheel we had lying around and reinstall the nut and washer. The front of the car is finally lowered back down to the ground and we can get on to the next step. Until then, make sure to click the like button below, follow us if you haven't already, and when you need parts or accessories for your vintage BW, steer over to jbugs.com.